Hey drawing friends, welcome to my channel. Today we're drawing the King Protea, one of the coolest flowers on the planet. This is the national flower of South Africa. There's over 1,500 species of Protea, but we're focusing on the King Protea today. If you haven't seen this flower before, you're definitely going to see it in wedding bouquets. I mean, they are gorgeous, you gotta look it up. What's really interesting about this flower to me is that the center part is actually where all of the florets are. And then these are not petals, but actually bracts, which are a modified leaf. And then you've got your stem and your leaves down below. And we're going with the three quarter view of the flower so that we can get both that inner floret area and then the outer bracts to get a really dynamic view of the protea. So as usual, there's a PDF in the description box below that you can download and follow along and copy for the video. Also, for this floral drawing series, we're using the hashtag on Instagram, Watts Floral Series, to share our drawings. So if you'd like to join, go check it out. All right, let's go draw the King Protea. Okay, so I always like to start with drawing the sketch so you can see how I kind of interpret a real life flower into an illustration. And for this one, if you haven't seen the first video in this floral drawing series, it talks about how I break flowers down into different kind of kitchen objects, uh, a plate, a cup, and an orange. And sometimes that cup is more of a vase shape, but it just kind of helps me to break things down into simple shapes. I think that's how all artists kind of approach their work is to kind of simplify things and then build off of that. So for the protea, I think of a, a cup and then instead of an orange, you've got a garlic kind of plopped into the cup and the cup is actually kind of scaly, almost like fish scales or an artichoke. So when you're drawing something like this, this looks a lot like fish scales or mermaid scales, you know. Um, so if you have your what's called bracts on the protea. Then your second row will kind of converge where these two met. And this is a lot like how you would do fish scales. And notice how I'm giving them a little bit of a curve to make them more organic. Okay, so this is the pattern that we're going with in two dimension and what we need to do is have it wrap around that cup shape to form this artichoke look right so the way that i would draw this is i would first draw a you know a bird's eye three quarter view cup and maybe this cup is a bit more of a round bottom and then inside that cup we have a a garlic that's just hanging out. Maybe it's a really cute little garlic. <laughs> and from there you can, you know, kind of draw your garlic lines just to kind of give yourself some guidelines to draw the florets as they're converging towards that center point on the flower. And again, I'm saying garlic, I'm just kind of using it as a metaphor because it looks like a garlic in the middle. So from here, what I like to do is draw those back bracts. And it's good to kind of keep in mind that these are going to kind of generally stop at the same point. So it's going to imitate this cup curve, right? And then the same with these foreground bracts. So you'll have, those will kind of come up to here. And make sure that they raise as you come around those corners to give it that three dimensional shape, right? Now, as you go down, you're going to eliminate some of the, the bracts or, you know, fish scales as it gets smaller and smaller so that it gives the illusion that it's kind of going towards that base and getting smaller. 
So we're going to make less on this row. And they'll get a little bit foreshortened as they wrap around the side. And then this bottom most row, mm, let's do this. Start with the front two. Okay, then do those side ones. Okay. There we go. And then for the florets in the center, those I end up just making tiny little lines over and over again that kind of create that garlic shape that starts as a bulb and kind of comes up to a point. And depending on how much of a three quarter view, you might see some of it of the back, right? Then from there we have our stem and the stem on a King Protea is pretty, pretty thick. And the leaves are super fun. They look like little, little flippers on a, on a fish or something waving at you. So I just have fun with those. They kind of have this uh, oval, like paddle-like shape to them. And if you put one in the foreground, it would get a, a bit foreshortened. Like that. And oftentimes you'll see the, the leaves mostly closer towards the, the flower area. Uh, especially when you see them in wedding bouquets, like all those leaves will kind of be clustered up towards the top mostly. All right, so here's my King Proteus sketch. And then from here, we will ink it and kind of make those more definitive line decisions. Okay, so here is my King Proteus sketch and I kind of drew a cup shape with a garlic sitting in the middle. <laughs> um, and then I am going for a little more of an organic look to it, kind of like how this one's a bit more open and the le or the bracts aren't consistent heights, just to give it a little more energy. Uh, you could definitely do more of a closed protea um, and, and go with one that's got more consistent bract placement. Whichever one makes you the most excited. Okay, so I've been using the Tombow Mono Drawing Pen in size 8 for this drawing series. And it's just to kind of uh, keep it consistent, you know, have a pen with a consistent line weight that I can add watercolor or marker to later. And I also like to go in and add a little bit of thickness to some of the areas to give it that brush pen effect. So it's a good beginner trick to do if you want the effect of a brush pen without having to have that hand control. Oh, but we will definitely be doing brush pen stuff. Don't you worry. Okay, so the way that I'm going to start this is start with that little center point where the florets sort of converge. You know, it actually might be good for me to do this top row of bracts and then add in the center florets so that we can kind of leave room for these leaves because I'm not doing them consistent heights to kind of keep it a little more organic looking. So I'm going to do that first. And just remember, as you come around these edges, you're going to want the drawing to raise up so that it keeps that illusion that it's going back into space and wrapping around the center of the flower. And these, you'll start to see the sides of them, and then you'll start to see the fronts again to the, the bracts that are back here. I didn't even know that there were all these different parts of a flower until I started this series and really got to start researching how flowers work. And 
it's pretty cool how some of them have things that others don't, but they all have this magic job of making more flowers. That's the thing that they're trying to do. <laughs> All right, and then we'll get this center in and maybe this one goes a little bit taller and just keep making sure that you're going raising up as you come around this curve. Maybe the sides of those. And I'm actually going to do one that's curving out a bit. All right, so that gives me some guidelines to draw the center florets. In the PDF, I do a, a layer in the center and then I do a layer on the outside, kind of like this reference. But you can do tons and tons of layers of florets in here. I just like to simplify it a little bit so that, you know, it's easier to digest visually. So. Following the sketch, we'll be creating a layer of florets in the center. We've definitely stylized and then start doing the second layer. Just making sure that you're following that sketch of that garlic-like shape that's in the center. I would say that this is a more challenging beginner flower for sure. All right, and then a third row. And now I'm going to just add in some extra lines to give it a more full looking center. I think this is the coolest part of the King Protea. And also these amazing little leaves that they have. They're so happy. All right, now it's time to start our second row of the fish scale artichoke looking, petal looking bracts. <laughs> Might be good to start from the center so that you can overlap a little easier. Don't let me get ahead of myself. And making sure to raise up a little bit as we come around that curve so that it looks three dimensional. And then I'm going to do one more row starting in the center. Magnificent. These are the coolest flowers. All right, so now I'm going to do the stem. And again, the stem on the Protea is a bit thicker. So it's good to just kind of leave some spaces for the leaves to grow from. Give me some space. So you've got a bit of a, a stem that carries out into the leaf. Stem and then like that. And then I'm going to take this one down this way now. And maybe one filling the space up a little bit right here. You can change your mind. Did you know that? Change my mind again right here. Fun. 
Okay, so from here, you're going to see me speed up the video, but I add in a little bit of thickness to my drawings just to give it a little more dimension. So that's gonna take a little bit and I'm just gonna play some elevator music for you. So there is a finished drawing of a uh, King Protea and I just want to show you real quick what this could look like with color. Ready for this? Okay so here's the color version finished and I had so much fun with it. I just quickly added in some color with the Tombow dual brush pens and then washed over the artwork a little bit with the Tombow water brush. So. That's a quick way to add color. So I hope you enjoyed this King Protea tutorial. I have so many more videos coming. So if you want to subscribe, you'll be kept up to date on everything that I'm doing. And if you join my newsletter, you will be able to keep up to date with my different classes. I teach Procreate, Photoshop, ink, and watercolor, and all kinds of stuff. So I'd love to have you join, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.